historical origins of their dis difficulties. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. So go ahead. I was yes. just on Facebook, and there's a young lady um, who's a playwright and author, and she said her dad used to read to them all the time and tell them about their history. Their uncles, everybody would sit at the table and tell them a different story about who they were. And she felt like that's what made her so strong as an African-American woman. So then when I read your... Um, L-O-Y? Yeah. It just, it just clicked, like, oh yeah, our history is important, and maybe we do need to spread more time on teacher folks where we came from. Because I didn't realize it played that big of a role in who we are as a person by knowing our history. Um, I think I just kind of took it for granted that I knew who I was, and didn't have to do any research, but now I'm ready to do some research um, to learn. I just seen it in the Essence magazine also. The, the lady said the same thing. It's all about knowing your roots, knowing your history, and it makes you a better person. So, I'm, I'm interested to see this whole process, um, Reconstruction Inc. get trained in teaching the history to the community. I think that's positive too, to hear it from people that we know makes it even better. So, I'm excited. And and so just to just to flavor before I, I go to Deirdre and Angela, the, the LOI and, and I'll read it for the, the video so that there's a clear perspective. They're actually gonna take uh, young men that were incarcerated and when they come home we actually have historians, we have some uh, psycholog uh, psychologists um, that are gonna work with these young men, some you know, from all age groups actually to give them um, the training that they need to become actual technicians, actual, um, their ability to facilitate discussions about how our history connects and, and really informs us as far as what we're going through today. So they're gonna be able to go out, halfway houses, go out in the community, and you know, use their own stories. There's gonna be some successes and some challenges and inform the public. The public is really uh, misinformed about folks that have come out of prison. And this opportunity is a great opportunity for these guys to actually get out in the community. So, um, did you that same question that I asked Alicia? Um, I've always felt like that. I think that um, children, you know, when they, when they come into the world, they should be taught their history of the family, the history of us as a people, and also I think that, you know, a lot of positive reinforcement, you know, goes a long way in, in guiding a person into becoming successful. I was reading um, Erica Badu's <clears throat> thing in essence, and she was saying that she had like five women in her life that shaped her and they all had a different part to play. Mm -hmm. Like the grandmother did the spirituality, right. the mom did a certain piece, and then they had one person that, you know, just told her she was beautiful and she was successful every day. And I think that that's where we miss out with our kids is that we don't do the nurturing yeah. from, and we don't give them the success stories and their history. It's so important to know that we come from, you know, greatness. Mm -hmm. And, and if you hear that all the time, mm -hmm. and you hear how you know how wonderful you are and how anything is possible, I think that that helps you so much to build your self esteem. Mm -hmm. And when you have high self esteem, you're not thinking about doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing. Not saying that you're perfect, but you're more aware of the cost, mm -hmm. and and you have some you have some value, you have some investment in yourself. You're more likely to want to go in a in a good direction. I think. You know, rather than take a risk and go in a bad direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, young men recovering from trauma, mm -hmm. how does their history play into their recovery process? Well, where are you going if you don't know where you came from? See, that's that's the thing. You know, in life, everyone, you know, especially kids, they all say when they grow up. We were just discussing this the other day, actually. Um, I want to be a firefighter, or I want to be a president, I want to be the president, or I want to be this, I want to be that, you know. A lot of times, those people who have been incarcerated, even from youth to adults, they had a dream too, to be that firefighter, that police officer, that whatever. 
but it was no one there, or may have not have been a team of people there. You know, it was like they said, it's a village for this child. So, you know, may have been that working mom, they couldn't really put the time in. May have been an absent father in the house. May have been, you know, different things going on to where that child may have not gotten what they actually need. So then when they get to become a teenager, they haven't been taught a lot of things, like who they are. You know what I mean? It's not who the world wants you to be. See, that's really tricky. It's really who they are and who who do you want to be. See, it's so much peer pressure and, and so much uh, the influence of the television and the influence of, of music that a lot of times I think that, you know, I'm not blaming it all on these things, but they are influences. You know, if you sit a child in front of a TV and they're and they're playing violent video games, don't think that that child may not mimic those things later on. That karate chop kick, mm -hmm. that you know what I mean. They mm -hmm. do do those things. Mm -hmm. You know, pow pow with a fake gun. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. So what I'm saying is, is that it's, it's a lot of times it's an influence. And if you don't know where you actually come from, if you're not grounded in your roots, then you know you don't know where you're going. You're just kind of letting. You're you're going. You're going for a ride, you know, and there's no one guiding you on that ride. So you're kind of just free spirited to do, you know, kind of like make whatever decisions that you want to make. You have to know history and you have to know how important you are as a black man, as a black woman, you know, because there are expectations. You know, you'll get to see an adult, like for instance, Michael Vick, you know, he's a grown up. He's not a teenager, but he made a mistake of dog fighting, right? Well, if you look at his background, there wasn't nobody telling him not to fight dogs. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, okay, what do you expect from a person who has never been taught anything about self-preservation, self-love, mm -hmm. you know, self-forgiveness? You know, it's a lot of different things involved in that. I just feel like, you know, at the end of the day, they have to be taught, you know, who they are, who they sh who they should be, you know, a productive person, you know, should be, and um, I think that a lot of the influences, you know, will cut down a lot of that, you know, TV, radio, that kind of stuff, cut down on, that, on the outside influences that we taught our own children. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, it's interesting how, if in fact that child, that youth, young man or woman, sees something on a daily basis. Yeah. That's their reality. That's their reality. That's what they are in. That's their environment. And people don't understand that environment plays a key role mm -hmm. in your upbringing. People want to say, oh, well, you know, um, but they see around them, and they, but that's not what they're living. Mm -hmm. See, you can watch something on TV, and let's say um, all the kids' shows. Well, those kids are rich, right? Mm -hmm. So all the kids' shows, Jesse and all the kids' shows, the kids are rich, they're living in mansions, everything's mm -hmm. good, and they're pulling their pants down in the, in, the, in the class, or they're like passing gas and, you know, like they're doing all of these things that aren't really good things, right. but it's funny. So the kid goes to school and says, this is funny. Mm -hmm. And then when they get, when the teacher calls and when the principal calls, it's not so funny mm -hmm. to that parent. And so what I'm saying is, is that that's not our reality. You know, like that's not what the reality for us is. That's really TV, but you'd be surprised how many kids think that TV is real. Raised on TV. Raised on TV. Yeah. Sitting on the or they, TV. they look at that and, and feel bad because if I was sitting in North Philly right. with a crackhead for a mom, right. or, and then or when I see Jessie and there, she's having a great life, life, great life and, and everything is wonderful, right. that's going to make me angry right. to that's watch. Right. That's gonna over, after a while, that's going to make you bitter and mm -hmm. angry, and that is going to make you want to take something from somebody because you don't have anything. Right. And no one's really shown you how to get it other than, you know, it's not hard work and dedication. Right. See, if they tell you, well, listen, in order to get this, you have to do this, I think a lot of more people would do it. You know, it's like, well, not, yeah, but if they you have, have to have the tools, see, the right. thing about it is that society does pretty much tell you in order to get this, you have to do that, you have to get college education. Mm -hmm. But how are you supposed well, to get it. there right. if you don't even have food for the week? Like, exactly. you don't even have clean clothes. Mm -hmm. Right. And the schools, the Philadelphia school system, right. they're not going to give you the tools that you need. They're not nurturing. Schools are not nurturing anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, you not have lunch ladies that if you don't have a lunch ticket, 
they'll let you start. Oh, yes. So yeah. the world is mean, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. And that's where yeah. I think a lot of that, that that goes to is that we're not compassionate people anymore. Right. It used to be like people would share their lunch and work. Right. The lunch lady would let you, you know, oh, you child. forgot your car, go ahead, you know. Now you don't, don't even know your people. people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't even know who lives next to yeah. you. You know, yeah. they will always, they seen you getting into trouble. They would say, oh, that's such and such son. Uh -huh. You know, oh, get off of here, you know, come on over here. You're not supposed to be doing that. Yeah. They don't care no more. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's and then it's kind of that, um, I was, I was watching the news last week. And the 16-year-old boy and his uncle beat up a dad inside of a pizza shop in front of the mom and the, the five-year-old son. And what threw my mind is... I've seen it on the news. It was yeah, so wasn't it? They, I mean, they actually dragged him out of the store. He was with his wife. Yeah, his and wife and his son. Child, yes. And yeah. his son is traumatized. So I, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say, well, what makes this 16-year-old boy this. punch a man in his face while he's here with his children? There's a disconnect with that boy, that 16-year-old boy, mm -hmm. and respecting the fatherhood of somebody else. Like, that's somebody's daddy he just punched in the face, and him and his uncle just beat up and dragged out the story. Mm -hmm. So I think what you're doing is really important, and maybe them learning their history mean they'll learn to respect themselves mm -hmm. and won't be trying to beat up other people and take up their little mm -hmm. chain. I don't know what the argument was about, but you see them standing there, and all of a sudden the boy just punches yes, the wrong man in the problem. And the man didn't even know what he was talking about. He yeah. said, you have a problem, and the man didn't even know what he was talking about. He all up, punched the man, beat him all up in front, dragged him outside, beat him up in front of his wife and his son. And his five-year-old son, son just jumped in yeah. crying. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that broke my heart. It's, 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 it's like people are, are dehumanized now. They're right. Mm -hmm. to, um, just, it's, it's no respect for yourself. And then mm -hmm. it's so much no violence and stuff on TV that they are like really just desensitized yeah. because they will beat you up. Yeah. You beat, that's the one but reason why I think people don't speak face. up is because they'll beat you up. Yeah. If you say any, I mean a 12 year old will beat you up if you say, oh, don't do that. Yeah. Or So it's, it's a bad, you yeah. know, it's a bad problem that we have because we've gotten so far away from our history and the elders and, and respect, respect for the elders in yeah. the community yeah. and respect for mm -hmm. our ancestors that we, you know, we are really suffering. Yeah. yeah. So broke my heart. We, we look at the, the, the folks that are going to be the cohorts, um, the targeted folk for this project, black males, all age groups, and they have been incarcerated, um, a lot of them with violent histories. Um, what do you see as some of the characteristics of that particular group? Um, what do you see as most helpful? at achieving the project's stated outcome. Consistency. That's so like about yeah. it. everything that's major. It has to be consistent major. because that is probably what's the problem. Mm -hmm. So Structure. So Structure. what about the cohorts themselves? Black men who've been incarcerated, um, those those characteristics, how can they inform this project? What do they bring to this project that you that you believe is, is helpful in order for them to achieve the outcomes. The outcomes, these guys They bring are, their histories. Okay. They bring their, their stories, mm -hmm. their, why they went, the way that they went, what happened to them. They bring the maturity of knowing that now if I had to do all over again, I would have, so they bring experience to it. Mm -hmm. But they bring that realism that this is a real live murderer mm -hmm. that went to jail, and this right. is what's going to happen to you, and he's going to sit there and tell you, mm -hmm. you know, why that's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think that that right there is priceless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because think. kids have a glamorized vision. They think because the stars, you know, go to, like, you know, go to jail for a couple days or whatever, they think that's glamorous. They think it's almost like a rite of passage. Oh, I got locked up, and it's almost like they're bragging, but they don't realize what it's really like not just the city, but when you're locked away for 10, 20, 30 years, how that really takes a toll on you, your family, mm -hmm. you know, how it takes away from the, your life. You know, I think the kids, if they really knew from a person that's been there, mm -hmm. that might be a deterrent. So who better to tell this story than, than the folks that have actually been yeah, through the process? Right, definitely. Um, do you have any more input on that, that particular 
No, I agree 100% because I think a lot of these guys, some of them are suffering mentally. Mm. I mean, mental illness in jail, it shouldn't be treated in jail. It should be treated at home where people can go get treatment. Mm. Like, if you have an issue, you shouldn't be locked up for your mental illness. I just think that's part of the problem. And then we need our fathers back. We, mm. we really need the men mm. in the house. I mean, it's... It's detrimental. I just keep thinking about that 16 year old boy hitting another father in the face. And I'm like, where's his dad? Like, he had no respect for the father. So I just really feel like we need our men back in the home. Absolutely. And maybe we need to define the role mm -hmm. of what it is that we want from our men. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? What it is that a man is supposed to be in the home. You know, because I'm going to go there now. My son, um, 22 years old, and he still acts like he's 12. But his his dad, mom, still takes care of his dad. And he thinks I'm supposed to take care of him. No, uh-uh. It's time to grow up and take care of your own responsibilities. I mean, he breaks my heart on a daily basis, so I just cut him off. Because I feel like it's time to cut him off, because I keep being, I just invested my half of my tax return into him to start his own business. Do you think he acknowledges the fact that I helped him start his own business? He's doing good with his business, and I'm proud of him, but he doesn't acknowledge his mom at all. So I'm just tired of being walked on by my son that I've done everything I could the right way. Everything. I worked hard, I brushed my behind for them to make sure they have everything. And he thinks he's just supposed to walk all over me, and it hurts. And it, and it seems to be a difficulty of a consistent formula. You know, black parents have gotten so individualized in how they raise their children. They don't want anyone on the block or anyone on the bus disciplining their children. Don't say nothing to my child. Mm -hmm. They go to school. A lot of time, parents will fight the teacher, mm -hmm. take the kid's side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Always take the kid's side. Mm -hmm. And when you have a zero policy in the schools, mm -hmm. you know, the parents are exacerbating the process that, you know, the kid just got in trouble. Now, hey, you come with all of this, it may have not been in a suspension, but they see the home being so destructive, it may turn into a suspension. Yeah. Um, so these folks, these these men, and, and coming to an understanding of who they are um, through history, what they've gone through, will provide, from what I'm consistently hearing, a sense of respect for self. Um, if in fact you knew what the ancestors went through for you to vote, for you to do the things you do, then you might have a second thought about violence towards someone that looks like you. you know? And that's the other thing too, is that most of our violent crimes, which is so crazy, is, is towards each other. Mm -hmm. It's not like we're going out and robbing people of another race, which we, I mean, we do that, yeah. but the painful stuff, the, the beating and the shooting and the mm -hmm. killing, we're doing that to each other. Yeah. yeah. I think that society has made our race not like each other. Oh, I definitely agree. The reason why I'm saying this is because people put, society puts certain people on pedestals, mm -hmm. you know, and it'll be like, Let's say Marilyn Monroe, okay? Everything is a Marilyn Monroe craze. Like, you know, um, especially on social sites, it'll be all these little sayings and it'll be Marilyn Monroe's picture. And it's like, Marilyn Monroe been going in a while. But I'm saying, people look to that and say, what? You know, there's so many black girls that'll look to Marilyn Monroe and use her little sayings and do her little stuff. And it's like, well, we have people to look to, too. Mm -hmm. Like a Dorothy Dandridge, mm -hmm. things like that. I'm just saying, like, a lot of times I just feel like, you know, we're looking for people to to mentor, to look up to, and a lot of times we're looking to the wrong people. You know what I mean? It's like, the people that society has placed on pedestals isn't, if you do their background, if you really look into their mm -hmm. history, mm -hmm. They're not really who you want to be. Right, right, right. right. You know, right. so I think that that right. has it does have a, lot, a lot to do with it. I want to look like her. I want to be like this person. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what did they get? Or we want that? Or basically, what it is, 
with us too is, and I think this is why a lot of people end up on this. We want money and we want that rich status so mm-hmm. bad that right. it's like get it anywhere. You look at Jay Z. He right. says, you know, he's pretty much bragging. I, I was a drug dealer, so mm-hmm. this, and so these guys out the street, they probably don't dream of being a drug dealer. They mm-hmm. dreaming of being it's like Jay Z. The they dreaming to be and trying to figure out ways to get right. Money. So the 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 reason why people probably do crime. It's actually a good reason because they're doing it to change their situation. They're doing it to better their lives, but they need to know that that's not the road that you can go in to better your life. But you do have success stories because Jay Z is saying that he sold drugs, he didn't go to jail, and now he's a he's a billionaire. So it worked for him. Yeah, but. That's a culture from the hood, because I'm from the hood. Mm-hmm. Everybody I know sold drugs. Right. They do miss pimps. I sold drugs. Mm-hmm. I stood on the corner mm-hmm. and sold drugs, because that was the culture. We can't get jobs. We can't get a job at McDonald's, Wendy's, mm-hmm. uh, Wanamaker's. They wasn't hiring us. So mm-hmm. we, we got on that corner, and we made our hustle. Mm-hmm. But we also had a plan not to be on that corner forever. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was our start. It was our building block. Mm-hmm. So I don't knock the hustle of a hustler in our community. Because there are no jobs out here right now, and we gotta eat. I mean, our bills need to be paid. Mm-hmm. And I'm that's not. Why I said Jesse isn't for us. I'm not saying it in a bad way. I'm just saying it like that's not these kids' reality. Right. Because these kids are growing up right. with parents right. who are might have to be on the corner. Right. Who might be having a still some pampers mm-hmm. for their kid to have, or still milk for like the mom have. who had to leave her like, kids in the car. Right. I felt bad for them. I called yeah. my girlfriend up. I said, I know this is going to sound crazy. I said, but I feel really bad for this mom mm-hmm. right now. Young um, black girl bread. had no one to watch her kids. She went a job interview. She left the car on, windows down, two kids in the car. We all know people who have done that. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So everybody's wanting to like stone her, like you know. Mm-hmm. But we all know people who have done yeah. that. And half of the people done it themselves, left mm-hmm. them in the car with the window down while they ran into the school. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. They trying to send her to jail. Now she was in a job interview. Mm-hmm. Literally trying to put food Better on the table. Yeah. But for see, her that's kids. where I that's so the issue now it's like be. There's, that's what I mean. There's no compassion. Not no, at all. because they're trying to like put her underneath the jet. Yeah. Where she the can't even be there for the kids. Yeah. Oh no, the kids. Didn't they're no, saying the it's just happening no. after that. No, the kids. The windows was down. The windows was down. The children were fine. That's what I'm saying. Rolled yes. up. Yeah. But, but, and seeing the kids in the car, and one of the kids was crying, and they called the police. But that's what I'm talking about. They weren't even babies. Have no compassion because why didn't the cop just give that lady a warning? Right. Oh, they look. Right. You know they trying to put you in jail because. Everybody now is on Twitter, so the cops are afraid. Everybody now is videotaping everything. Yeah. You can't do little things, mm-hmm. you know, and get away with it. But why couldn't the cop just say, you know what, lady, don't do that. Right. Next time, I'm going to do X, right. We right. always got a chance right. in our day. Right. Like, you did something bad, like my brothers would do. The judge, all right, don't do that no more. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm going yeah. mm-hmm. to release you to your parents. Yeah. I'm not going to give you a record. I don't mean how, how yeah, many Yeah, but the judge can't do that this no more. They, they, their hands is tied because of the politicians mm-hmm. who made these judges do mandatory sentences. Yeah. The judges can't even say, okay, well, I'll lessen this. I'll do, no. They have to go by that mandatory sentence. Mandatory but then you got that Kennedy guy that raped that girl, and the judge said mm-hmm. that he thinks that he political. would be harmed by prison. Right. That judge got paid. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a lot of these politics yeah. that, like you yeah. said, it's, 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 it's like, for, it's like for the brown people, they can't take that chance, but I see them doing it for the Caucasian people oh, yeah. all the time. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's it's criminal, like, like you have a criminal protection. background, we're not going to hire you. They, they hire people with criminal backgrounds. Well, well no, I know, because um, my little brother has a criminal record, and uh, he's half black and half white, but he looks like he's white, mm-hmm. he gets jobs all the oh, time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all the time. Mm-hmm. He does. Big Donald, I mean, KFC, Boston yeah. Market, work mm-hmm. for the freight of people, that, you know, he gets jobs. So a lot of times it is that. And, and a lot of times, even when you hear a, somebody rob somebody, a mother rob somebody, oh, she's on drugs, we'll put her in rehab. But then if she was, could be black, and it's like, Oh, we're gonna put her in jail, right. but then maybe she'll get help later. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. So a lot of times it's like they they'll give certain people extra chances. Oh yeah, but oh, that's wow. the bitterness and that's the hope. Why they get mad that, that people 
that justifies a life of crime. That, that's the, the, I can't get a break no matter how hard I try. There's right. no resources out there for me to feed my kids. Right. So I might as well just go back to what I was doing. And I'm trying to tell you, a lot of that TV has a lot to do with a lot of mm-hmm. stuff. I was looking at um, different shows from when I was a kid, like the Cosby show. Mm-hmm. That was a good show, mm-hmm. you know different world. Mm-hmm. You know, you see the kids going to college. Mm-hmm. You know, that, was like my that was my show yeah, too. Was my I'm favorite. watching these shows now, right? Because when you turn on other shows like reality TV and different things like that, it's like, well, now it's cool to be drunk. Oh, yeah. See, it wasn't cool back in the day, you know, like in a different world days, mm-hmm. to get drunk and, and be wasted and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But now that's so cool now. Mm-hmm. Bad Girls Club. That was cool to be a bad mm-hmm. girl. You see what I'm saying? It's it wasn't right. cool then. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you it was it wasn't good. You know, certain things. It, were, it was more expectations. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, all that stuff is cool to do. Oh, yeah. You know, so if I could you're not me. doing that. Oh, well, if you're not um, doing that, then you're not cool. Yeah. Yeah. Then, what what about if if, if reconstruction and, 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 and its application shows black men? to be trained, become technicians, facilitate these type of discussions. Mm-hmm. Is there anything about what they bring to the table that is a detriment to this project? Of course. Well, yeah, I mean. I mean, if they're not sincere, if they're not, you know, if they're just looking at this as a, as a, as a you know, situation where they can take Afford. advantage of somebody, if they're not sincere about really wanting to do it, mm-hmm. that would be the detriment. Other than that, I can't really see any detriment. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. So, and did you see any detriment to using well, this properly? No, I think. Well, I think that what what is going to happen is, you know, everything isn't going to be smooth in the beginning. Okay, you're going to have some bumps in the road. You're going to have some, uh, you know, some some falls and different things like that. I think rage is what a lot of those people have. You know, you commit a crime, you know, a lot of times you committed that crime because you were mad about something. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and so what I'm saying is those people still have their rage. Mm-hmm. And so they haven't had the proper uh, therapy, mm-hmm. outlet, different things like that to release that rage. So if you're getting someone who's fresh out of prison, with all this built up rage for the system, for somebody making them... You know, if you talk to if you talk to a lot of ex offenders, you know, and you ask them a question, they can get an attitude with you over you asking them a question because they've been asked so many questions, or you telling them to do something, mm-hmm. and they could be their own mother telling them to do something. Mm-hmm. They'll take offense to it. And you're like, well, what is wrong with you? I only asked you to take out the trash. Oh, because I always had to, you know, do what they told me to do. You know, like you know what I mean? It really does. It happens like that. You know, I, I don't want anybody telling me what to do. You know. And it was all because of being institutionalized. So what I'm saying is you're going to have a lot of rage. And um, and you're going to have to work with that person. Yeah. You know. But I found that it's, it's a lot of brothers that come out. They want to tell their story to keep them from coming out. Right. So if y'all can find that population, that group that's more willing to tell the story. Mm-hmm. Then. So they, they're, they're encouraged. They, they want to do something to give back. Mm-hmm. But they, they, need, they need help themselves and that's what, what, what we were talking about right. like the success rate for a, a, a person that was incarcerated to come home to their family and and be like this mm-hmm. it's like yeah, what is it two percent if, if, if it's even that and mm-hmm. not just their wife but even maybe their moms and and their kids because they reunification with their family mm-hmm. is so slim because the family has no clue what they were going through or even really what to do and the person doesn't have any clue of what they need mm-hmm. what does family mean to them what is a family like well is- it's it's but it's so it's almost it's so impossible because when he first came home we talked about that the other day like we didn't know we thinking that he's this person that went away most families you're thinking like okay this is my husband you know mm-hmm. he was we used to go do this and we used to do that it's been like 10 years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the stuff that you used to do is not even there anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, the kid, like, mine was like eight years old. She don't know him. Mm-hmm. You don't know him because when he, went, when he went away, you were 12. Now you're 20. 
you know, or older. So everybody's roles are all messed up mm -hmm. because we're all trying to go back to where we were and we can't. Mm -hmm. So that's frustrating mm -hmm. because it's like a whole new relationship that you have to build. Mm -hmm. You almost have to forget about everything in the past and start, and start fresh. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like you have an issue with everybody. Him and her had an issue. Him and me had an issue. Him and mine. And, and, and you have to work through all of that stuff. Build the relationships. Yeah. All over the again. Everybody's angry. I'm angry because mm -hmm. you did it. You know, you went away. Mine's angry. Where was you at? Mm -hmm. Angie's angry because I've been here all the time. And, mm -hmm. and he's angry because whatever he's angry about. So all of that anger has to get put aside. And, and all of that communication, and then you have to build on that. So when you get people fresh out of prison, they got to deal with their old stuff first. Yeah. They got to go home to their wives, their children, their mothers, if whoever they crimed against, if it was a family member, or whatever, they took that family through twenty, thirty thousand dollars 30000 in lawyer's fees. Mm -hmm. So their debt is so high. Mm -hmm. How are they going to, what are they going to have left to give? To and trust somebody else, and the, and the trust factor, because but it's almost like a setup because they let you out, they drop you off, and they, okay, you free. That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Figure it out. You got it, but but you got to get a drive. You better not commit no more crimes. Right. Nobody better not call us right. and say you did anything. It's yeah. like every turn you're going back. Me personally, I could never be on because everything you do could say I could not live with that pressure mm -hmm. of every day if I say hi to the wrong person and they call the cops on me, mm -hmm. I could go back. And that's, yeah, a, real, that's a reality. Yeah, when so, you're in system. so the rage that folks come out of prison, the frustration right. of what's going on in their daily lives, right. um, whether they're not sincere when right. they come to this project, do you really want to be trained to go right. out and talk and facilitate these discussions? Mm -hmm. Those could be detriments. Um, and, and it's really interesting because Part of what we talked about is all the responsibilities on the person that comes out of prison, that parole and the authorities do not care how you accomplish them. Mm -hmm. You need a job, you need to start paying child support, and you need to be home at such and such a time. You, you know, the constant responsibility of someone coming home, and then their family has to develop a system while you've been away. Right. So how do you come in to fit into that system? That's a frustrating process, mm. and, and, and folks bring that. You know, they've done it, they've been able to do it, they've kept things going, here you come in, and if you were uh, an authoritarian, when you were the breadwinner, and you were calling shots, and, and, and the family respected that as your role, you want to be that person again when you come home. Right. You know, you don't have a job, but you want to be an authoritarian. Right. You know, you want to tell folks what to do, but you can't contribute to the financial possibilities of, of it getting done. Right. Yep. And it's and it's very so. Those are uh, important things for us to think about as we're recruiting folks um, to be part of the cohorts. Let me go to another question and the next question: What part, if any, of the cohorts' experience will be important? for other people to hear about. Everything that a person that's been incarcerated has gone through, both incarcerated, coming home, how is their you know, experience um, important for other folks to hear? Okay, guilty by reason of arrest by Terrence Hakeem. Mm -hmm. He tells you that the probation officers, they don't really want you to stay home because they get a bonus if you go back to jail. So they send you back home without no support system purposely so they can get more money in their pockets. So take him as an example of one of those that came home and said, I'm tired of this. Like y'all have messed with the wrong one. I'm gonna make sure everybody knows what's going on in the system. Mm -hmm. They bring a lot to the table. They bring so much experience. They bring so much to the table. That's what went what, on what, on the inside. They can't really be talked about to everybody. So maybe a group of guys can sit there and talk about what's going to go on. Because you will get raped, you will go through this, you will go through that, and they'll try to help each other out through the system, teach you about the system before you get in it. So if you get in it, you'll know how to navigate, but try to keep you from going in the system seems to be uh, what his purpose is. So I, I think if you get people like that, 
y'all would have an awesome, awesome cohort and correcting that. So what are some of the other important things that these men can say, can bring to this, this project that the folks in the community really, really need to hear? What's going on? They, he brought it to life for me. I'm, I'm not going to say it again, but after reading that book, he brought the whole thing to life for me. Like, could you, could the two of you, Angela? Well, you, I think that, up? I think people have to know, like, if you never hear anybody's story, it's, it's a lot of judging, mm -hmm. see? That's the whole thing. It's real easy for, for someone to judge uh, someone else, you know? If you don't know that their backs, if you don't know their backstory of how they actually got there, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. right. You know, then you know you're casting stones on someone, but that could have been you, or that could have been your son, or that could have been your nephew. So I think by hearing a backstory, you know, you could be more sympathetic or empathetic to mm -hmm. that person because that could have been your son. You know what I mean? They got into that situation, or could it be well, that, your yeah, that, father? That's definitely got into that. a valid point because I think that we like to sit on our pedestals mm -hmm. a lot. I mean, and and that oh, I never knew anybody went to jail. Oh my God, yeah, and I've never, and I would never, you know, or they'll say that like that's like the because he went to jail, or the, it's mm -hmm. like the the worst thing when if we're honest, everybody knows somebody that went to oh, jail, yeah, of course. But a lot of us like to act like you know mm -hmm. we don't know anybody like that, mm -hmm. and, you know, so not, yeah, and, and and really the people that I know that have been to jail. I don't even know what they did. They're like the best people I ever wanted. I mean, they are so good. Brother Hakeem, you know, just genuinely nice, decent people, human people. Better than the people that I know a lot of times that you never went. Because a lot of times, just because that person went to jail doesn't mean that they're a bad person. Right. See, that's the whole thing. Right. Just because you, you went to jail, you could have went to jail for, let's say, you, uh, prime example, uh, don't give the names, but you know, someone's son, you know, killed somebody, but that person was attacking a woman, trying to rape her, you know, mm -hmm. and he was in the military, but he wasn't on, you know, wasn't active or whatever the case was going on, but he was military trained, um, he did have a license to carry, you know, and he ended up shooting the guy, right? Now, it wasn't his fight. You see what I mean? He seen someone in danger. Well, they still gave him 10 years in the state of Ohio. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is, is that he did 10 years in prison for trying to save someone else. You see, he's not a bad person. Right? You see what I mean? <clears throat> and a lot of times there are cases like that, you know, protecting your family, protecting your loved ones, you know, um, or even stuff like, you know, robberies that went wrong, you know what I mean? They, you may have robbed for whatever reason, whatever the case may be, that person doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad person, right? Just because they did a bad thing. Because see, you can know people who've never went to jail who've killed people. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of people that kill people that've never been to jail. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And there's a lot of people that uh, did a lot of things to people all great, all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. They've never been to jail either. Mm -hmm. You know, they just sitting right with their families <clears throat> like they never did any of these things. Mm -hmm. And those people may have been really twisted and may have really needed the help. Jail may have would have kept them off the street from hurting other people. Mm -hmm. But there, what I'm saying is, is that everyone in jail isn't bad. Right. You know, people make mistakes, mm -hmm. you know, for whatever reason. They didn't use their better judgment mm -hmm. and it got them into a situation. But it doesn't mean that that person is a bad person. Right. See, that's where people, oh, he's been to jail. He must be a bad person. Oh, he's been to jail. I don't want to be around him. Oh, he's been to jail. I don't want to, you know what I mean? Watch your kids. Like, you get what I'm saying? And it's like, well, you might have did, you know that person might have did a whole bunch of stuff they wasn't supposed to do. Mm -hmm. They just never got caught. Cool. Exactly. Let me um, just take a couple minute break. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can lay the water down. <laughs> um, and we can take a breath because we kind of got into some deep stuff. So. Five minute break, okay. relax, and we'll pick it up. We're going to have two more questions. Okay. That was so good. Um